The breakup is filmed in front of a live studio audience. Don't make their mistake. That's not fair. You're not. You're not allowed to start us. It's a cold open. No, I don't want it to be. A, I want a warm open. Mm. Mm-mm. We're warming up. All right. It's a toasty something degrees. All right. I'm probably sitting. It's actually apart. cold today. Mm-hmm. It's actually really cold. And I, and I wish you'd respect how cold it is today, for the first time in I think three months. Yes. Uh, ew. He's judging my drinking habits. Uh, <laughs> shit, this shitty podcast is off to a shit start. Uh, welcome. I, to, well, welcome. I thought we were just warming up. I don't know. It's this jazz, is, baby. This is not jazz. I've seen jazz. I've played jazz. I've been jazz. I think I've definitely actually played jazz as opposed to you. I played saxophone. I stand corrected, actually, then. <laughs> I thought you were I thought you were full of shit. Yeah, well, you know what? Fuck you. This is why we're not good friends. This is why we made this podcast, to be better friends to each other. To be worse friends by being better friends. This is the worst idea of all time. Nope. <laughs> nope. No infringing on better podcasts. This is the breakup featuring Sam and Jacob, two dumb people. Stupid, stupid men doing stupid, stupid things. We're not even like, I'm not even a third into this cider, and I already want to punch you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the nervous laughter that really gets you. Yeah, it is. All right, so this is this is the breakup, uh, where you store things you love, give them away, yeah, etc. All right, good. I think we're I'm glad we're, we're good. about that at this point. Okay, so uh, it's me this week. What did you make me do this week? Uh, really? We're, yeah. We're not even gonna have some more playful banter. We're just you want really... some more playful banter. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so Jacob's actually in the room with me this yeah, time. Yeah, hi. You can tell because I don't sound like a robot. That is correct. Jacob is 100% humane. I am, I am. I have been made flesh by uh, the dreams and wishes of... The Blue Fairy has granted his wish to be a real boy. Also, a dead cricket was involved. And I'd like to apologize to humanitarian efforts anywhere for killing a cricket to become a real human boy. I don't... Not because I personally have any connection with the cricket, but more just, uh, I don't want a tumbler of war because of the things I've done today. You know, I actually don't think it's past tumbler to get really mad about a cricket dying. And I'm, I'm a pretty hard cook. Oh no, oh, he's, my co-host is signaling, signaling <laughs> no, no, me no, to no, cut no. off. We, we, we can't, no. No, okay, not, all right, we'll cut this out. What, what right. else did you do? What, what would I make you do? All right. All right, I'm supposed to say I'm it. I'm supposed to say it. What did you make me do this week? I uh, actually several weeks ago. I uh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, what did I make you do? I made you play the exciting uh, game experience mm. of Game Grumps produced Dream Daddy. Dream Daddy. So, Sam, my boy. Mm. Do you like a summary of my? I would experience? like you to summarize what this game is about, because okay. I've never played it before. Apparently, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. tell me, tell the viewers, listeners, the people, what is Dream Daddy? Dream Daddy is the story of a sad man, man named Jacob Wask. Dad, I slept with Robert. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> On the first night. First night. Didn't even hesitate. You, you were just like yeah. Jacob Wask. Dad is a sad man who lost his wife. And just needed a little... He needed the touch of a human being. A I greasy man in a leather jacket. I swear to God. I fucked him. You fucked him? Yes. Tell me everything. Mm. I would be kissing and telling. Tell me you. Ev- you owe this to me. <laughs> you made like a <laughs> sick fuck. You made... This is terrible. You can't be in the room. <laughs> I can't look at you. <laughs> you made an avatar 
of Jacob you. Wasco have, as a disgusting um, dad. I'll, I'll throw this up yeah. on the website later. I have yeah. I have a screenshot. No, tell show me, show me everything. No, show totally me the totally. sick fantasies you wanted me to engage in for you. Come on, do it, do it. If you just give me a moment, type faster. Okay. You named it truth.bmp. <laughs> Uh, pictures, an image of an avatar of guy who looks a lot like Jacob saying, I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope that nobody talks to me. And I've labeled this file truth.bump. <laughs> I, I think we found the title for this podcast. Uh, well, it's got to start with a D, right? Or where, like, maybe we moved into the second season. <laughs> maybe, it starts maybe, with T's now. Maybe, maybe it's season two. All right. So, what sick sexual fantasies did you make me act out for? You, oh, Sam? so many. So, who did you date? I, I can't believe you just stuck with Robert. That's that's not enough men for Jacob. <laughs> Jacob Wass dad. Jacob Wass dad. Jacob Wass dad he, also cares very much about his daughter. Mm. And wanted to, wanted to have like you know a partner for her, but first he went after attractive intellectual Hugo, and that actually went very well. Yeah, they I found can out their shared love of wrestling, <laughs> and. Uh, and they got together, but you know what? That wasn't enough for Jacob Wass' dad. He just, he just self sabotaged that relationship, and so then he was attracted to uh, sexy preppy uh, Joseph. Um, I knew you would make me do Christian. this. I knew, despite you w- being adamantly Jewish, Jacob Wass' dad was like, "Oh, maybe I see what's on the other side." He, 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 he other wanted side. to see how hung Jesus was. Yes, he did, but that didn't work out. Actually, yeah, that, that doesn't work, work out. out. Tell me how that. Didn't tell me out. how that ended. Come on, lay it on. Very sad. I Went mean, back to his, his horrible, abusive wife. Not Jacob Wass' dad, whose <laughs> wife was, as we said, dead. Uh, and then, then he was like, well, maybe I'll move on to... Maybe I'll move on to... I need some more passion in my life. I'll move on to Brian. Brian, who is oh like... Oh my God, why do you choose brings, the worst brings out Brings out the, the best and the worst in Jacob Wass' dad. His burly self. Brian is literally Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Nick listens to this. Too. <laughs> hey, Nick. I guess we shouldn't use real people's names. Oh no, we've, we're, we've way past that with I, with enemy of the podcast and nothing more. Jesse, Jesse Cal. I almost called him Jesse Wasco, which is like so maybe maybe that's a other, other step than too the far. creepy sexual fetishism of you wanting me to have sex with. All and then I dated Matt, who was a really sweet guy. Oh my god, you just kept going. Just kept going. And then I tried to get the good ending of Joseph, but then I got really bored and I put it away. Okay, here's a, here's a twist for you. There's mm. no good ending for Joseph. What? No, it's not. There's no pinup? Okay. Well, you get the pinup at, at the I end. I didn't of, get the pinup. Okay, so there's an, uh, another ending where you also get a pinup, and it's oh. still not a good ending because he still goes back to his wife. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what, tell, before I actually go into this, tell me, what did you think of... I really liked it, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> obviously, we sang the theme song twice. <laughs> It was really charming, and it didn't overstay its welcome. Like, fucking, we won't talk about that one from the first zero episode. Yeah. No, I, I just, it was really fun. Like, I had a lot of fun with it, and it had a good sense of humor. And I couldn't bring myself to give the daughter the bad ending. I just every time I went through, I just gave her the good ending. Well, apparently, uh, people were really mad that it wasn't easier to get the bad ending with her. Oh, was it kind of hard to get the bad ending? Well, it's more that. As people are naturally empathetic creatures, you kind of figure out what works with her pretty early on. Mm-hmm. You know I'm, who I was ba- sorry. Uh, you know who I was bad at was uh, I couldn't quite figure out Joseph. Funny enough, well, Joseph's really serious. Yeah, Joseph is not yeah. at all kind of like thinking about like like kind of witty <laughs> or sarcastic. He didn't like my attempts at nihilist humor with uh, with my old buddy Craig. <laughs> Who I had no sexual interest in whatsoever. Yeah, no, Craig, Craig's kind of... Uh, Craig's I'm kind into of... into the preppy Christian blonde gods. <sighs> He's kind of an Adonis in that mm. way. Which, which is why there's no good ending for him, I imagine. Oh, I'm so, dis- I'm so disappointed to know there's that. A I, hit- I want him to be There's happy. a hidden ending. I've heard about the hidden ending. Yes. Actually. I heard All about right. that before you signed the game. All right, so I, I guess we should talk about why I... Yeah, let's talk about this. Okay, yeah. why I... I think that... <laughs> Okay, this is going to get me in trouble with people Uh-oh. who I think actually... We're already in trouble, tr- trouble with the Tumblers, so... so okay, just... so... Well, this will get me more in trouble with the Tumblr. Okay. I think this is the first video game that really focused on LGBTQ relationships mm-hmm. that did it well. 
I'm just, I okay. I, I feel like I don't. I'm not knowledgeable enough yeah. to counter that point. But you feel but, like there's got to be something. Well, I was looking at Leighton Gray, who or Leighton Gray. I'm apologies if I pronounced her name wrong. She's like she is a queer woman, and yeah. like I, I I wouldn't expect her to get it wrong, you know. Yeah. Like, well, for me, it's just that a lot of the comparisons for LGBTQ relationships is Bioware. Oh yeah, and the, yeah, yeah. And the yeah. things they do. They're, yeah. they're the people who are like, oh yeah, if you want that kind of experience of gen- uh, gender and, and sexuality experimentation and mm. relationships and that sort of thing, you go to them. Mm-hmm. And I don't like when Bioware does it because I get this feeling of exploitation. Interesting. Which is which is not the reaction a lot of people have no. to Bioware doing. No, for, for people it's like look at look at these people who are like liberating the LGBTQ dialogue. Well, no, well, some people are like that, but a lot of other people are like joyless fucks who are like, oh, no, gay people in my video games. Yeah, I mean, and I'm cool with that. And I've seen gay, lesbian characters in games that are really cool and interesting. But with Bioware, I've always just felt like, oh, this is weird and not... Mm. Like, it's either shoehorned in in a way that doesn't yeah. quite make sense to me, to me, personally, or it's, it feels like they're doing it just for the money. And I have no way to quantify that <laughs> feeling, other than the fact that... We're going to get Bioware's, so much trouble oh, for this they're episode. Gonna, they're going to kill me. Gonna, oh, man. Well, it's funny. I haven't played a lot of... I haven't played any Bioware video games, actually. But. Maybe I'll force... Well, actually, they're too long if we want to keep this to a week. <laughs> Except for this well, last this, time. Yeah, we apologize. I'm doing... I have, I've I've had things you, going you, on. You've been doing things. I'm going to plug that at the end of the show, actually. I know you are. Yeah. I know you are. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, it's... Fun. Okay, well, here's here's what I like about Dream Daddy, but then I, I feel like I'm going to get kind of heavy. Um, I like that they're... It's probably because like it came from a place of like a queer person making a queer video game, but like... Them being queer is not an issue. Like, no. you can choose your av- your avatar. Dad can be like he can be gay, he can be bi. Like, it doesn't matter. Nobody yeah. comments on it. Nobody, even like the Christian guy, that's not his issue. No, like, you know. Whereas with Bioware, it's just so mm-hmm. center. Yeah, in in a way that isn't driving any like discussion <laughs> about it. It's just that yeah. like flashing, like look at this thing we have. Whereas with Dream Daddy, it's yep. very natural. It's like actual human being relationships. Mm-hmm. Well, and what's interesting, and the counterpoint, I suppose, and I don't know if this is legit, um, there's, they talk about sometimes in LGBT criticism, like, when do you make a video game or a movie or whatever, and the people are gay, and that's incidental. It doesn't matter if, if they are gay or whatever, and that's fine, that's representation. They're gay, and it doesn't matter. Or is it a is it something about like the LGBT experience and you i might say that the dream daddy is not about the lgbt experience because i mean no, it's just because everyone's very accepting. It's, it's very accepting there's no there's no discrimination i didn't really i, I didn't want them to be discriminatory no that, like, that'd be weird so um i i can't uh, what i'm what i'm awkwardly trying to get at is like i guess there's an argument to be made that it's it could be kind of a shallow way of presenting it yeah but i don't think it is like my per, that that there's my devil's advocacy I think it's actually really sweet, and I really enjoyed it. I like I like the dad humor, the stupid puns. I knew every time I did a pun, I knew I was going to get like... Hi, hungry. Uh, I'm dad. <laughs> I, I swear all of those are written by Brian. I know that's not true, but I like to imagine it. I, you know what I didn't... I should have done. I didn't actually look up what the mechanics of how you gain points and things, because there's like the dad rating and the daddy rating. I, and I, I, I kind of could guess what that means. And I think our listening audience will probably guess what that means. Dad versus daddy. The only one I really um, knocked out of the park was Hugo. Um, <laughs> Hugo's, Hugo's an easy read. Well, I got the wrestling thing and I felt pretty good about myself. And I wasn't sure if, like, well, was this hard to... Was I... Like, I feel like you're supposed to not go that route and, like, to try to press that press that out of him. Well... There's an intellectual character who likes professional wrestling. Yeah. That was your context. What a shocker. What a shocker. Um... I felt I felt real good about that. I was like, "Yeah, I learned something about my friend and future lover." And then it gets all kinky, and it's kind of like wrestling sex. Well, it's not that kinky. It's not that kinky. There was a lot less sex than that other visual novel you sent me. Yeah, no, there's there's I think uh, 
Leather Daddy is the most explicit. Which one is that? Uh, oh my god. You can spoil it for me. Uh, no, no, I've forgotten his name. Leather Daddy. Is it the vampire guy? No, no, no. The, act, the, the bad boy. Oh, Robert. 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 Yeah. Jesus. Robert. Ro- Robert it, is the most... That scene is, I think, the most explicit. There's a lot of aftercare or morning after scenes. Oh, uh, okay. Like, there's more of those. But yeah. those are, you know... Sweet. Um, I didn't go for the, the gothy guy. Cause really? Like that was too too my type. That was oh, like, no. I couldn't, I couldn't... That has such a good twist. And, you know, it's like... It's not what Jacob Wasdad would do. That is exactly what Jacob Wastad would do. <laughs> Speaking as Jacob Wastad, you know nothing about me. I did fill in the quest. The first time I did the questionnaire for Dad Book, I filled it in how I thought you would fill it in, <laughs> like kind of like best guess. And then after that, I realized it was arbitrary. And it didn't, or maybe there's like an Easter egg for that or something. But I didn't. That didn't seem to change anything. Yeah, maybe it affects how the dates go. Maybe God. I regret we didn't get more of these for for ourselves. So. I guess it's time to talk about, talk about secret ending. Secret ending. So, which was somewhat controversial. It was. It was it. Well, okay. okay. Are we talking about the ha- the the Halloween thing? That yeah. Might, yeah. Okay. Somewhat controversial, apparently. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so for you listeners who have apparently now just been spoiled, of we've spoiled. Sorry. Yeah, we're spoiling all this game that apparently yeah. everyone has played. So fuck you. Well, great. So basically, there is a. Secret, secret, ending. secret Joseph ending. And yeah, that, uh, and and this is part of why Dream Daddy might seem so perhaps shallow. <laughs> is uh, Joseph is an eldritch god who's maybe en- yeah who has engineered the entire situation <laughs> basically. Uh, he, who's like about to ritually sacrifice you? Uh, he explains that. Everyone's partners being dead or gone is largely no his, mistake. Largely his responsibility, except for oh, your, I hadn't I hadn't read about that. Except for your partner, apparently. I, I just read that like he's running a cult in the basement, and that's the joke. And I didn't realize it was more than that. Oh, it's dark. Interesting. It's that kind of I don't know if that ruins it for me or not. Did, did you do many of the Robert dates? I didn't do any of the Robert dates. Okay, so the thing about Robert because I powered through it yesterday. Yeah, I could do so it like we're talking about your play experience mm-hmm. for me. Robert's the canon ending. Oh. If if the Halloween bonus end, if that's if, true, if that's true, which okay. I mean, okay, for people who think this is really actually kind of like, oh my god, I can't believe you would do this. It's so horrible. It's it's not supposed to be. It's just a thing that's for fun. Like it's not. Don't take it so. Don't death threat people who do feminine versions of the dads. Just stop it. Stop. Just really stop. stop. So the thing about Robert is that he <laughs> is he keeps talking about these. You can't look at me. Can't look at me. <laughs> like he's sitting right beside me. He's usually on the phone, and I can control myself, which is not true at all. If you've listened to this podcast, no, I, I have a modicum of self control. He's just there. And the thing is, I keep looking at you. I keep going for eye contact. Well, I keep okay. What I do is I'm staring at the audacity reader. Yeah. yeah. All right. Continue. Continue. So the thing about Robert is that. He talks a lot about like paranormal activity shit. Like, oh, does oh, there's he? ghosts and like oh. oh man and but a common thing that comes up in a few date lines is like oh, shit. What's the name of the town that they're in? Uh, Maple Bay. The Maple Bay Snatcher. Oh, and okay. like you you joke around with Robin occasionally. Yeah, all this stuff's made up, and then you say, oh yeah, and even the Maple Bay Snatcher's like no. That's real. <laughs> Fuck off. That's real, real. And if you pursue Robert and then try and finish with Joseph, he comes up to you and is like, what the fuck are you doing hanging with Joseph? Mm. Which makes me think he's escaped from Joseph's <laughs> claws once before. <laughs> this, is, this is my head canon. Okay. Please, please, don't, please don't say this is actual canon. It's the Jacob Wasco head canon corner. Jacob Wasco head canon. So... I so yeah, I really liked this. I really liked it too, and I and I thought you would like yeah, it. Yeah, no, I did. And I was like, well, I know what will scare him is the fact it's a visual novel. No, that did that did scare me quite a bit. Yeah, because there was also anal sex <laughs> implied. <laughs> was not that was not my problem with the first one. <laughs> my problem was it was basically underage anal sex. Probably maybe. It's so great. It's so great. 
Yeah. Uh, so I guess we're at the we're at almost yeah we're three. about okay. All right. So so let's let's move on. So final verdict. Final verdict. Two in your in your uh, rubric of, of evaluations. Two thumbs up. Great. Awesome. Yeah, it's really good. That's excellent. Sam, what'd you make me watch? I made you watch Bernie, the docudrama by a tour Richard Linklater, a man who knows how to make a film. That I've already actually seen kind of happen. Yeah, already kind of happen. It, was, it turns out actually Jacob had seen part of this. So yeah. this is, I, we I, sort of cheated. We're cheating each other. Well, I missed regard. the crucial middle, actually. So. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's what I get for drinking. So. One well, never. <laughs> Bernie is a film uh, starring Jack Black, starring Jack Black as Jack Black, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, who is trapped in an East Texas nightmare town. <laughs> Uh, filled with lots of salt of the earth people, and he is deeply loved by this town. By all. And and one night, uh, he manages to arrive at uh, one of the houses of one of the elderly people, and this her husband recently passed away, and he'd always been sweet on the elder ladies of the town. And so he arrives late at night, and he enters the home, and he brought the fun- a funeral director with him, mm. basically. And it's so late, they're like, hey, can we just spend the night here? And so... I like how this is becoming psycho. Like, this is... <laughs> and so eventually... And then they had a shower. And then the old lady acquiesces, and they get to talking about, you know, past relationships and things. And it turns out... I'm not going to spoil it for... Viewer audiences. Well, we, there is, this is a spoiler zone. I don't know. Well, of course, you are making most of this up. So, it, Well, I'm making it up about your play. Uh, <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> I was getting there before I realized oh, oh, I was going to ruin this. <laughs> I don't, don't want to ruin it. I don't like, want to ruin it. <laughs> You know, I, I was so tempted to say they arrive at 4 a.m. And then, go, <laughs> then it would have, yeah. Yeah, then, then you'd be like, no, no, stop, no, no. <laughs> but then you'd have to look at me and you wouldn't do it. No. <laughs> You flinched away. I know I did. All right, so um, <laughs> let's, let's drop this thread. Why do you like Bernie? Well, I like Bernie. Um, I really like Richard Link later, as I kind of said earlier. Um, he makes really good movies, mm. and this is just like a really. I've never seen a movie like this in a funny way. Like it's so the movie is presented like it's a fake out documentary in a yeah. way. Like it is a real thing that really did happen. Um, the basic premise is uh, a very, very nice man killed a miserly old woman yeah. who lived in the town. Like, but he was so beloved by the town that they actually had to move the trial because they wouldn't because conv- they him. would probably wouldn't have convicted him. Yeah, um, and, and everyone also hated her. Yes, um, and it's presented like a documentary, and it's mostly reenactments, but some of the talking heads are actually the real people. Yeah, and I've never heard of a movie that does that. It's also like Jack Black's best performance. Really, I would I would say, um, like that's he actually really gets into that character. Well, it helps that uh, the actual Bernie helps Jack yeah, Black yeah. in prison yeah, to yeah. say, "Oh, this is what I'm feeling yeah. at the time" um, and things like that. But no, it's 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 a really good movie. I just it's a really solid movie. That's kind of where I'm coming at on, yeah. on it. Yeah, it and like I said, Richard Linklater is. Can do anything. I, <laughs> enemy of the podcast, Jesse Kell, nothing else. <laughs> Jesse Kell, nothing else. Um, so you've had one too many, one, and you only had yeah, one. Yeah, I've only had one. Um, he and I have talked a lot about Richard Linklater and how like that guy can just like pick a genre and make a good movie, and mm. or something you know, sometimes a flawed movie, but like oh, let's do like a romantic trilogy with Ethan Hawke, or let's make like a rotoscope movie about dreams. Let's make a movie about like saving school with rock and roll. Let's make a docudrama that's sort of a fake docudrama, but also real. Like, he could do anything. And and you just love this man. I really like Richard Linklater. Really but I really like I really like Bernie. It's it's very funny, but also very poignant and I, th- I also like movies about freaks. <laughs> like yeah. just it's the the whole town is just kind of a freak show. Well, I mean, despite you being a playwriter, you're also a horror writer. I am. So that you are compelled to Oh Jesus, that nervous. Oh, don't you don't no. Okay, I'm not touching nope, that. No, no, no Strombo uh, so I, I feel that, that you are compelled to look at freaks. If there was a freak show going through town, you you would at least go tacitly going, Oh, I know this is an abusive cycle of dealing with people with horrible disformities, but you would go 
and try and feel less guilty about it. <laughs> and and Bernie kind of is that, in that the the three main characters are are poor old Bernie, mm. the the old elderly the old woman, woman he's yeah. sweet on, and and the sheriff. Or oh, that scene where he's in the church <laughs> and he's looking around like. Okay, so there's a scene. It's Matthew McConaughey of of shirt shirt doffing fame, um, and there's a church service where they're basically saying like we have to help Bernie, yeah, who obviously murdered this woman, and Matthew McConaughey does the best is this real life look I've ever seen in my life in a movie. Um, sorry, that was digression. Well, I mean, you really, really, really love this film. I, I really like it. I really, really like it. See, uh, the thing for me is. Mm. I'd watched parts of it. I watched like the beginning. Yeah. And I watched like not the complete end, but like a bit of the end. Mm. Um there there are more gaps of the end than say in the beginning. Yeah. And the part I missed, which was the middle, was yeah. the part I liked the least. Oh really? Okay. Where they're very much it it moves away from documentary a bit there. Yeah. Because it's a lot a lot more about here is the relationship as we imagine it between yeah, Bernie yeah. and this old woman. Yeah. And I I like Jack Black, mm -hmm. but he's trying to play this kind of awkward, timid boy. Well, he's playing like... I wouldn't say that Bernie Tita is a repressed homosexual. And there's our kind of our theme, running theme for this one. Um, but he's certainly... In the closet, in another sense, like there's something about him. There's there's hiding. something deep in there that yeah. he's just not. He can't reveal. No. Um, yeah, it's it's. I think he does a really good job with it. Like, oh he, yeah, yeah. With that, absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, it's like watching a child be constantly bullied because okay. that's that's kind of how Bernie behaves. It's yeah. like this very well-meaning child. Yeah. And then here's the rest of the world. Hmm. And I think that's probably part of why these townsfolk just loved him to death because nothing could be Bernie's fault, really, mm -hmm. except for the fact he shot someone <laughs> yeah. in the back and then put them in I, a freezer. I just love the element that he's like, he's a mortician. <laughs> that just adds so that opening scene where he's he's oh, doing God. a lecture. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's, um, you know what this 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 may be something I you get to watch later on in the podcast. I think it might be a little advanced for right now, but it reminded oh, no. me a lot of um, the films of Errol Morris. Have you ever heard of Errol Morris? The name rings a bell. He did. He's done a lot of documentaries and <clears throat> uh, famously did the Thin Blue Line, where an interview with a guy who was falsely accused of murder, um, or is there, there was a guy who was falsely accused of murder. And there was an interview with another man who was the actual murderer. And he basically confessed on camera or on, on tape. And this is sort of what the movie is famous for. And he also did, like, uh, this thing about this guy who became a Holocaust denialist because he was a really bad scientist, but not anti-Semitic. And uh, It was to cover up his terrible, terrible science thing. <laughs> he kind of was, actually. And um, he also did, like, The Fog of War about... Uh, Robert McNamara, who was J Robert Robert Kennedy. You maybe you've seen that. I've seen that. Yeah, one. Rob, seen... yeah. That's and I actually Errol quite Morris. like that. Yeah, document. yeah. Um, Errol Morris has done a lot of stuff. Um, he, some people say Roger Ebert says he may have made the greatest movie of all time in a movie called uh, Gates of Heaven, which is about a pet cemetery. <laughs> I, gu I guess Roger Ebert is allowed to have an opinion. I haven't seen it myself, so I can't say. Uh, I do know that Werner Herzog ate his shoe over it. He made a bet that this movie would never be successful, and then he was wrong. And, so, and so he literally in front shoe. of an audience, he he cooked and ate his shoe. <laughs> anyway, that, but it, it reminds me a bit of an Errol Morris movie because he's he's a big fan of sort of the odd folks around town and interviewing them kind of deal. Yeah, I mean, I guess like the the really natural thing about it is like you feel like you know this town. You do, yeah. This Actually, you know the place. town more than Bernie by the end. Yeah, because Bernie, like as we said, there's this element that's just like, what's his deal? Yeah, there's there's a hidden element. And, yeah. Whereas the town, it's like, oh yeah, I, I could imagine living here. The town is kind of the main character. Um, Very much so. Yeah, no, I I, I just I really like Bernie, <laughs> <laughs> and I think for me, like. For what it is, I really like it. Yeah, I, I think that it's a good docu drama. Whatever, comedy. yeah. But indefinable that, but that it is so indefinable. Mm. Like I feel like, 
I'm, now that I'm thinking about the Magnamara documentary and really liking that documentary. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This is so good. It's a great documentary. Yeah, but I think for Bernie, I like, I like, I really like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Just, I'm just struggling to think of like, there's Dude, something kind of... There's me- something missing? It, it, it's like there's... No, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to get off my high horse. Oh, I just, shit. I just really like it. You heard it here first, folks. I'm just gonna get down <laughs> to the earth and just be like, I like it. All right, I like it. I, I would give it two thumbs up. As well. Give it two. Thumbs That's up. actually my first two thumbs up. That is your first two thumbs up. Um, well, previously the record holder was uh, Slings and Arrows, which was like a thumb and a half. Yeah, th- yeah. a thumb and a thumb so, and a quarter. First thumb. time, two two thumbs. It's kind of cheating because I you'd sort of seen it before. Yeah, I knew we were going. But, but but it's also cheating that I I had expressed to you when I watched it. Oh, I really like this. That is true. That is true. I so may I rem- oh maybe it's punishment game. Well, here's the thing, mm. though. I watched it with my mom. You did, but we were allowed to do that. We had to talk about it afterwards. Uh, what did she think of it? Um, she thought it was just weird. Yeah, I'm not surprised. That, that's the, that's <laughs> the thing with me and my mother is I show her these things and she's like, "Why? I don't get this, Jacob. Why, I was. <laughs> why? Why? I don't. Why?" Why? Why? Like she thought it was kind of stupendous. Yeah, yeah. And and, and, and sort of awesome in the traditional sense yeah. of the word. But it was just kind of like, really? <laughs> I never I'll never forget we walked in, she was watching a movie. It was The Island, uh, which is the ripoff of uh that terrible clone movie that Mystery Science Theater did. And we came in and she was watching it and we sort of started riffing on it a little bit. She was like, no. No, this is my time. <laughs> you guys can do this anytime you want. This is my time. Well, to be fair, I would watch the things she would watch and do that a bit. Mm-hmm. And she'd be like, no. Let <laughs> let me watch my terrible sci-fi show in peace, Jacob. <laughs> let me do this. A, 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 a strong weakness of my mother is like... She likes the sci-fi? She likes what I would call campy sci-fi, uh, and she would deny with a passion. Interesting. She she would say, no, it's not campy, it's just, you know, sci-fi. Give an example. Um, I actually consider... Let's like, put, put your mother on blast here. <laughs> <laughs> putting my... Putting your my poor, 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 blast. your poor mother on blast. Um, God, um... I, I actually consider Star Trek a bit campy. Star Trek is a bit campy. She wouldn't consider it campy, yeah. though. I like I love Star Trek. I've seen all of all of Star Trek. Yeah, I consider it very um, campy. What else? Um, there, are the, there are so many. There's a new sci-fi show like mm. every fucking week. So I'm, oh Jesus! <laughs> we should just cut the spark because I can't remember a single guy. <laughs> you can't you can't prove anything about your mom. Yeah, no. Star well, Trek's too easy. I wouldn't want to prove anything. <laughs> it's my mom. It's my mom. What are your mom like, Sam? She pretty much has a very similar taste to mine. Um, so yeah, Bernie was two thumbs up from Jacob Waska. Yeah, Bern, Bernie was good. I, nice. I would recommend it. I finally win. Yeah. <laughs> now, but to decide if it is, it have has Jacob earned the punishment game? Has Jacob earned the punishment game? I for this week, it's stay of execution. Next week. Well, because we, we, you recommended a movie to me that you knew I liked. Yeah. Which is a soft rule break. Stay of execution. But you did talk about it, so you say, with your mother. Yeah. So that is, that is a violation of the rules, and we must be cruel on the podcast. We must be loving, but we must be cruel. So stay of execution this week. Next time, punishment game. Okay. Sam's turn. All right. So you're, you're, all right, you're going through it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Going through it. Mm-hmm. Going through it. I got to get him in when I can. Um, so. Prick. What is our shared theme this week? Obviously, it's homosexuality, but <laughs> I don't know what the D word is for this. The D, the D is the, the D, D word. The D, obviously. Okay, <laughs> that's done. <laughs> Do, okay. do you need a minute? No, I'm good. Do you need the D? Oh. <laughs> well, that was easier than I thought it would be. Well, you usually are like, what's the theme? And then I say it, and you just burst into hysteria. Well, uh, usually we... We're really good at this, actually. We only really <laughs> struggled on one of them. We were I, just like, D-word. I, I, I think the Strombo helped this time. I think the booze did help. All right. All right. We're, so, sh- we're so. short this week. We're, a little, we are, we're running a little short. Sam, I feel like you could fill this time with a certain plug. Yes, I could fill this plug with a certain plug. Um, 
So if any of you happen to be in Vancouver and you're not like my close friends that I'm forcing to see this on uh, on Facebook. I hate to tell you this, Sam, but most of our close friends are the people who are listening to this. Yeah, most of our close friends. Um, uh, if you are in Vancouver and you like theater, I am doing a play at the Vancouver Fringe Festival uh, till, let's see, the 16th, which is the day before my birthday. So if you want to give me a birthday present, you will come see my play, Adult Company. Uh, I co-wrote it with a... Uh, a, a good friend of mine from Vancouver Island, uh, Jessica Schacht. Uh, I said title of the play? God, I have Ted Twitch during it. It was the only one. <laughs> My play adult, is... Adult Company. The, adult, the name is Adult thank Company. You, thank you. I'm sure I already said it. Uh, it is running until the 16th of September, and you can get tickets online or at the door or wherever, and you can come say hi to me. Um, don't. Don't, though. Don't do that. No. Um... But yeah, if he, you want he to... will actually abandon you to hang out with the actors instead. <laughs> I'm too I, good. I was actually I'm too li- good for you. I was a little wounded. <laughs> <laughs> I was really hungry. I, I know. I was so hungry. I, know. I didn't end up hanging out with them anyway. I know. I was just a little. I, just, so I understood. Was a little hurt. Jacob came to see the play. So I, did, I saw if you, want, if you are, if I you are better than Jacob Waskow. Come see my. I play. gave a hundred dollars this time. Jacob Wasco came a hundred dollars to our play, and all he got was because a, I love you, Sam, because you're got, my friend. All he got was a comp ticket. <laughs> um, prick. Anyway, that's the end of the plug. Come all see right. my play. All right. Um, so yeah, I think that that kind of wraps it up. This we did this. It was a tight episode. This was tight. It was tight. Do we have more more things to fill it in? Do you have any plugs? <laughs> Sam, you know I don't nah, have I know a you life. Don't. I know. Um, I'm a graduate student. I'm lucky to eat tomorrow. Well, we should probably give our, each other our, our things, our assignments for next time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. We should. That we should is part of the show. So, all right. All right. So, what do you got for me? All right. I, kind of, I always want you to go first. All right. So, <laughs> Sam. Yes. When we began this project, I said I was going to oh, train no, you. The, oh. Train you. Okay. And this is, this is part two. This is a movie this time. body is ready. This is a movie this okay. time, so it's not okay. you don't okay. have to watch a whole series of oh, some please no. You are gonna watch 2009's Redline the movie. I have not heard of this at all, and I have no expectations. There's a whatsoever. musical cue I really want you to play. We're gonna do it next time. I, I know okay, we will. we'll do it next time. We will do the musical <laughs> cue next time. You know I'm all about you're the gonna, You're gonna watch this movie. You may not like it. Okay. There will be problems. I'm I'm <laughs> ninety. No, I'm a hundred percent certain you'll go. I don't like how they did this, and I'll go. I know, Sam. That's just how <laughs> shitty this genre is, and we'll have to move on from there. Okay. But that's your assignment. 2009's Red Line. I'm real. This one, I'm going in on like nothing. I know nothing about this. Good. Um, I just have to look up the year of what my thing is because it's more interesting that way. I think it's actually. I thought I thought you were just gonna end that. It's more interesting. It's more interesting than your recommendation. It's, more, it's a better recommendation. My God. Ponzi shit is better than your lowbrow shit. Redline is not there lowbrow. All right, Jacob. For your next assignment, you will be watching 1974 Roman Polanski's Chinatown. Oh, cool! One of my favorite movies. I, no, I know. I know that you like shitty mysteries. And this, <laughs> seems like, this seems like king shitty now here's, mystery. Here's the question. Do you know the twist? No, I know not. I only know the title. Of Perfect. Chant. All right, and the ending scene of just like it's trying. It's, to yeah, change. it's trying to change Jake. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So we have our assignments. Yeah. So yeah, we we have to end on our final thought. We have to. Uh, one of us has to fall into hysterics, and unfortunately, it was when you said the D, <laughs> the D word. <laughs> You're still just like I'm I still. I'm pretty happy believe. with that. That was like that was when art and and humor and stupidity meet. And it's perfect. I think that's our final word. <laughs> that's our final thought. Yeah, we're, we're, we're art and stupidity and humor. <laughs> Via con Dios, audience. We'll see you next week. Woo! Woo! I, I can't believe you fucked Robert! <laughs>